stand together as we get started. 250. There in the heart of melody. Jesus whispers sweet and Through the week, read not the entire chapter, not the entire book, the entire chapter of Hebrews 11. We're going to read the whole book tonight. But anyway, Hebrews 11 will be studying our Lord over the next few weeks, so looking forward to that. It's going to go to the Lord Prayer tonight, ask His blessings upon the service. That's for the pots, if you would please. These are the total grace we'll get started tonight. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for us being able to gather here in your house again tonight, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the country that we have, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. Thank you for our pastor, Lord. We ask that you put us your hedge of protection around him and his family, Lord. Lord, we ask that you speak through him tonight, Lord, that you open our hearts to it, Lord. Thank you for the message this morning, Lord, that you helped so much, Lord. We ask that the Holy Ghost convicts us again tonight, Lord, that we're able to go out to the world, Lord, and use it, Lord. In Jesus Christ's perfect holy name we pray. Amen. 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 We remain standing 264, 264. He is able to deliver thee. Our God is able to deliver thee. 264. 164. Tis the grandest thing through the ages wrong. Tis the grandest thing for a mortal tongue. Tis the grandest thing that the world ever saw. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Grandest theme in the earth for 
have just a few announcements tonight. Today, again, is the last day to turn in uh, how many folks you brought. Uh, the number of folks you brought for the competition we had in May, of course, inside of our church, we also had competition. So I've had two families turn in uh, their totals. So, so far, we have a first place and a second place. Uh, so to, uh, we'll announce that next Sunday morning. We'll give away the gift cards. So don't come to me next Sunday, please. Say, I brought 15 people. I'll say, praise the Lord for next contest because today's the last day. So if you uh, have that information, I'd love to get that uh, tonight. Speaking of growth, and we're looking forward to that again, thank God for 51 first-time visitors last month. And uh, I think there was four of them this morning that were here that have been coming faithfully uh, since then. So praise the Lord, there is fruit that remains from that. It's not just... Again, it, the last time we did that, we, we gained the Potts family. This time, we have a couple others that have been coming. Single, the Candelaria family is one that uh, my dad and I, they've been coming since then. A couple other uh, single people have come every week uh, since that contest as well. So it, it does work. Invite people, and that's how our church grows. As I told the men on Friday night, I have a goal, a uh, vision for our church, 100 by the end of September, a big day of 100 by September. At 75 this morning, praise the Lord for that. That's wonderful. Uh, we're heading the right way because the week before that we had uh, 66, I think it was. So we're heading the right direction. Let's just keep bringing folks, inviting them. Uh, speaking of the folks going back, pray for the goddesses are traveling home this Wednesday, I believe it is. So pray for them as they travel home, if you would please. So looking forward to God doing great things in our church. Uh, here's the thing. We only have 164 chairs in the auditorium. So Keep that in mind. We only have 164. Okay, only that many. So let's try and fill them up. Uh, the reason I bring that up is because the magic number then is 131. 131. Uh, the, and I, I don't like what they say now. The church, so-called church growth experts, they say when you reach 80 percent of your buildings, your auditorium's capacity, you'll be capped off. You won't grow much more. And I heard that when we were over there on 314. I said that ain't true. Whoa, whoa. We never got above 80 percent we just kind of hovered around there and so uh 131 let's get there and average that because that's by the end from october to the end of the year we want to average at least 100 on sunday mornings it's a good place and again as i said this morning there's lots of good places to say amen even during the even during the announcement we say amen so our goal but well, what if we don't make 100 by september if we don't shoot for it i guarantee you we're not gonna we're not gonna accidentally break 100. We're not going to accidentally break 100. Okay? Let's work toward that. Invite people. And then if we don't try to average at least 100, we never will. Let's just keep going and see what God can do uh, for that. Tomorrow night, invite all of Now, it doesn't just have to be teens. If anybody wants to come, we're going to be live streaming the National Youth Conference from North Valley Baptist Church. Uh, we'll meet tomorrow night at 630 and uh, have some uh, refreshments and things for the young people. So uh, come tomorrow night, 6.30. I don't know what time it will be done. Uh, so if you need to, if you need to drop your teens off, that's fine. And when it gets close to being done, we'll call and let you know. Uh, just please don't be five hours away when we call and let you know uh, when it'll be done. So if you need to drop them off, that's fine. Uh, we can be here to watch the service with them. But if you want to stay and watch the service, you're more than welcome to. You might want to feed them first, if at all possible because uh, we might scrounge up some pizza or something, but even if they've already eaten, I know they'll eat more pizza, but I'm not sure if we'll get some, so maybe feed them first, or they can learn to fast, one of the two. Uh, so look forward to have that tomorrow night and Tuesday night uh, as well. So many of us calling this Saturday, get a good group out with that, please, if we possibly could. We'll meet at 9 30, try and leave by 10. And then not tomorrow, but again, next, the following Monday, the 28th of June, Kids leave for junior team camp right now. I think we have 18 young people signed up to go to camp. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, but be praying for the kids, for sure, for safety and all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, God would speak to their hearts while they're there at camp. And then on the uh, June, uh, sorry, July 21st, the 23rd is the Hour Time Youth Conference up in Albuquerque. So be in prayer for that as well. July the 4th, of course, on a Sunday this year, in the evening, barbecue evening, we'll have a barbecue. So be inviting people. So if you've got something going on, instead of going to a baseball game, they can come to church. Uh, and uh, even, and listen, if they want to go to a baseball game, they have to buy tickets to get in the game. If they want to buy tickets to get in here, I mean, we can do that too. But uh, that way they feel more at home. But we'll have a, a church service barbecue right afterwards and the church will provide the hampers hot dogs and buns and whatnot and then um, bring some other food from our folks and then we'll stay have a barbecue and then uh, the uh, village will be shooting off fireworks 
uh, you might be able to see them right from here, but if you feel like walking, it's going to be basically just right across the road over there, but we can probably see them from here. So you might want to bring lawn chairs and pick up truck beds and things like that to watch the 4th of July celebration. And also, it's not just the 4th of July. Remember, it's Independence Day. Keep that in mind. It's not just the 4th of July. Uh, it is Independence Day. And so keep that in mind as we celebrate. Now, I love all that goes on that day, the baseball games and the fireworks and the hot dogs and all that stuff. But it's all for Independence Day. I keep that in mind. So since we didn't have any birthdays this morning, I guess we don't have any tonight. Is that correct? All right, good. Let's sing a song. We'll take up our evening offering. 391. I'd rather have Jesus. We'll sing all the verses and take up our evening offering. Number 391.
come one last time for the message. Page number 70 in our hymn books. Page number 70, all four verses. The Unclouded Day. All four verses. Page number 70. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. We can stand for the reverence of the Word of God. We can also read it sitting down. We're not being here, Reverend, that's for sure. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 11. And uh, as I mentioned, Lord willing, plan on, uh, for a few Sunday nights, I always want to try and set a number, and I never stick to that number on how many nights it's going to take uh, to study through, through something, especially a doctrine as important to our Christian's life, to our Christian life, as the doctrine of faith. Um, what, a, what a wonderful thing is the faith in Hebrews 11. Uh, as I was just... Well, wrote recently, I had seen some videos. Those who know anything about sports know uh, about the Hall of Faith. Um, just recently saw how they're surprising some guys about the Hall of Fame. Uh, and Hall of Fame is what I meant to say, how they uh, just show up to a guy's house who's a very good football player. And I guess there's a certain guy that is the one that lets them know they've been inducted into the Hall of Fame. He knocks on the door and they see that guy and they get very uh, excited and surprised because now they're being recognized not just as somebody who is very good, but somebody who is worthy of something called the Hall of Fame. In Hebrews chapter 11, we, we, we refer to this as the Hall of Faith. Uh, these folks mentioned here were, now there's been some great, great Christians throughout the years, but Hebrews 11 kind of holds the Hall of Faith, if you will. And as we look at Hebrews chapter number 11, you'll, as we read through that, you'll hear many familiar names and some things we can learn from them. But just the doctrine of faith, so important. We're saved by faith. We live by faith. And so let's understand and learn a little bit more about faith tonight and for the next few Sunday nights. Hebrews 11, we're going to read the entire chapter. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. 
But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he would after receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacle with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, and from whence also received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph in worship, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, for he had respect and the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the pastor from the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians the same to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the heart at Rahab perished, not perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies of peace. And what shall I more say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and Barak, and of Samson, and of Jeshla, Jeth. Jephthi, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, and escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, Yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonments, they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, and were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of earth. Uh, and, all, and these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Father, thank you for your word. Pray help us we look now at the, the doctrine of faith. He'd help us to grow in our faith. Speak to hearts, I pray, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. But Joe, is this one cutting out? Should I just shut this off and stay with the... Okay, I'll shut this off and just try and stay stationary tonight if that works. So. Hebrews chapter number 11, one of the most important but often neglected aspects of the Christian life is the fact the Bible tells us that we are to live by faith. And I titled the lesson tonight this, you heard over and over again, by faith, by faith. Over and over again, by faith, this person did that, this person did this. 
And four times in the Bible it tells us that the Bible tells us that we are to live by faith. Habakkuk 2 4, the Bible says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Romans 1 17. For there it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. In Hebrews 10 38, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Faith is not us just blinding doing things and hoping they work out for the best. Faith is us standing firm on what the Bible teaches, not necessarily on what some famous person believes, unless what they believe is found in the Word of God, but what the Bible teaches. Our faith, think about it this way, our faith will be tested, but our faith can and should be triumphant. If we're standing firm on the faith of the Word of God, it can be triumphant. I know one thing for sure, our faith will be tested. We'll look at a few things tonight about faith, and then uh, we'll let God speak to our hearts. I don't know how long it'll take to get through all this. My plan is to have us out before we're dark or something like that. First of all, the description of faith. Verse number one gives me a description of faith. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of of things not seen. Here we see a description of faith. The Bible talks about a substance. That, that substance there uh, bears with the idea the teaching that it's something that we stand on. By faith. Again, by faith we see all these things. By faith we believe on them. Things hoped for, the Bible says. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things hoped for. That hoped for is not speaking of, I hope it rains tonight. By the way, I hope it rains tonight. We went home this afternoon and it was thundering and everything. I'm thinking, man, it's going to be a, a downpour. And we got just enough to get the car dirty. And that's fine because that's what God wants us to have. But I do hope it rains a lot tonight. I hope the wind doesn't pick up very much tonight. But that's when people read that word hope in the Bible. They're so used to the words the way they are used today. They apply that thinking to this. That's not of things hoped for. When the Bible talks about a hope, Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope. It's something that we know is going to happen. When the word hope there is used in the Bible, it's we're living with anticipation. We know it's going to take place. We just don't know when it's going to take place. The evidence of the, the substance of things hoped for. Hope in the Bible speaks of something that's going to happen. Look at me in a few verses if you would. Uh, first of all, there you're in Hebrews. Go to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 19. The Bible speaks of something that is going to happen. Hebrews 6 and verse 19. Verse 18. Hebrews 6, 18 and 19. Again, it's not just, well, I hope so. I hope so. No, it's something that's going to happen. Hebrews 6, uh, 18 and 19. That by two immutable things in which... It is impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. And now our hope in Jesus Christ is not, I hope he gets me to heaven. No, it's a knowing for sure. It's the Bible there says, sure and steadfast. It'll never change. The, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Again, that word hope in Titus chapter number 2. Titus Philemon. So right before uh, Hebrews, the book of Titus. Actually, a couple books there. Titus chapter 2 and verse number 13. Also chapter 3 and verse 7. We see the, the word hope. Titus 2.13. Looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. How about Titus 3, 7? That being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Again, it's not something I hope I have eternal life. Hebrews tells it's, it's sure and steadfast. And we've been given the hope of eternal life. We know that we know that it's going to happen. I've used this illustration before that words change in meaning over time. Don't take today's meaning of hope and apply it to the Word of God. 120, 
20 years ago, long time ago, even my dad wasn't around 120 years ago. 120 years ago, you could walk down the streets of San Francisco or the streets of Santa Fe and say, make this statement, I'm feeling very gay today. And it would mean the right thing. It would mean I'm very happy, I'm very joyful. But I wouldn't recommend you walking down the streets of San Francisco or even the streets of Santa Fe saying the same thing today. Although the world would pat you on the back for saying that, it means an entire different thing. Words change. By the way, you'll never find a gay sodomite. Yeah, but you'll never find a gay one. They're mad about everything. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. I know, I know I'm know. i kind of teaching tonight, but there are good places to say amen. And you will never find a gay sodomite. Right. Or a gay, uh, the word they like is lesbian, but I don't know, I don't know what the Bible calls about women that turn in the lust one to another. They're not gay. They use that term on themselves, but they're not happy. They're not joyful. That's what that word means. Quit letting the world steal words. Amen. Anyway, just like the word hope. Okay? Cowboys fans have the hope that they will not be 8-8 eight eight this year. Because there are 17 games in the they've changed it, so they can't be 8-8 eight eight anymore. Amen. Anyway, they'll be 8-8 eight eight and 1 this year. The word hope doesn't mean I think I'm beating a dead horse. You're understanding though. I hope no, it's a blessed hope. It's the evidence of things hoped for. And Hebrews, I'm sorry, let's go to 1 Peter 1 3. We'll see another evidence here of hope. 1 Peter 1 3. I like to let the Bible clarify what the words mean. 1 Peter 1 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Once again, it's not where I, I hope. So when the Bible says that the, the evidence of things hoped for, back there in Hebrews chapter, the substance of things hoped for. That's the that's a definition or a description of faith, not just the substance of things hoped for. The Bible goes on that verse 1 to say this evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. And it's kind of like, as Jesus described in John chapter 3, kind of like the wind. You can't see the wind. But you can see the evidence of the wind. Now some, we live in the next On the way to church, on the way home last night, I told my wife I could not see the wind, but driving home late last night, there was dust blowing everywhere. I mean, every, you can see all the, all the street lights, all the lights in the Walmart parking lot, everything. Is, there was a haze over everything. Why? Because the dust that was in the wind. I couldn't see the wind, but I could sure see things blowing in the wind. That's the evidence of the wind. Kind of like the Bible talks about the evidence of things not seen. Here in the Bible, uh, John in John 3, Jesus said that John 3, 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The Bible talks about evidence of things not seen. The Bible also gives us evidence of God and evidence of God's creation. Uh, here in the Bible, I, I should have written it down, but we already read the verse, where by faith we know that the world were formed by the words of God. Uh, Psalm 19.1, the Bible says, The heavens declare the glory of God, the firmament showeth His handiwork. There's an evidence... In the Word of God, it tells us that God created everything, but there is evidence of things not seen. There's evidence in the world of creation. There's evidence in the Bible of creation. But there's no, uh, again, everything that ever found in the world agrees with the account of creation in the Word of God. None of it ever agrees with evolution. But since we're not worried about what they say, let's get worried about what the Word of God says. We see in Genesis 1, you're, you're familiar with this verse, but please go there unless you can remember, unless you can say it from memory, but still good to see it. Genesis 1 and verse 1. We'll look at a few verses to talk about evidence of creation. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And then he spends the rest of the chapter for those who need to know details. Some people are like, okay, cool, God created everything. That's all I need to know. But then God 
give us details of how he prayed. What did he pray on what day? The evidence of things not seen. Then John, I'm sorry, I was doing order. Uh, Psalm 33 and verse number 6. Psalm 33, 6. The evidence of things not seen. Evidence of creation. John 33. Sorry, there's no John 33. Psalm 33 and verse 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. The reason we believe this is how, how do we believe that the worlds were created? By faith. I'm hoping somebody's already looked that up, but where in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, verse 1, talks about by faith we believe the worlds were created. Which one? Is it Hebrews 11, 1? Let me get back here. I'm showing my I, I had I thought I had it down. Well, the one that talked is by faith we believe that I read it, I can't remember which one it is. Verse four. No? Yeah, three, thank you. Through faith. We understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. How about Psalm 33 and verse 6? By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the holes them by the breath of his mouth. We understand to get the evidence. We by faith. Nobody was there to see it. So by faith, there's evidence that it happened throughout the Word of God. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word with God, the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things are made by Him. How about Revelation chapter number 4 and verse 11? By faith, we believe that God spake everything into existence. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11 says this, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Well, we believe creation by faith, and some would say it's not true because I can't see it. Yeah, no kidding, you can't see it because the Bible says it's by faith we believe that it happened. We don't need to see proof of it. The proof that I have that God created everything is right here. That's the proof I have. Well, prove that God created everything. Well, I can't prove God created everything. Through faith, I understand that God created everything. Just as I can't prove that God created everything, somebody who believes in evolution cannot prove that evolution created anything. There are no, there are no transitional anythings. Anyway. There is no missing link. There is, although I've seen some people that put evidence of creation. That's where faith comes in. By faith, we believe that God created these things. The same faith that saves us, we have to believe that God created everything. Because we can't save ourselves. We're, we're saved by faith. We're trusting God. Just as we said, some would say, well, prove creation. I can't prove creation. Although everything that scientifically proven agrees with the Bible. Everything scientifically proven agrees with the Bible. Anyway. I can't prove creation just like I can't really prove God. But by faith, I believe. Evidence of things not seen. Evidence of creation. How about the, the evidence of God? The evidence of God is this because of creation all that. That's where faith comes in. Number two, the evidence of a worldwide flood. Not a local flood, but a worldwide flood that covered everything. Fish fossils on top of mountains. How in the world did those get there? Well, billions of years ago, before fish ever formed, there was this thing that now you, you're getting ridiculous. There's no way, there's no way, there's no how, there's no describing it. Here, here's, here's a way to describe it, that for 40 days and 40 nights, the heavens were open, and the fountains of the deep burst forth, and the Bible says that everything was covered, and fish, fossils, end up on mountains. 
The Grand Canyon is a great evidence of a worldwide flood. The Rio Grande Gorge is evidence of a worldwide flood. That didn't form over billions of years. Because if it, if it had, why, why would there that great big thing happen there where all that rock is, but down here where there's just a bunch of sand, if billions of years of erosion there, why didn't it happen here? What it was was 40 days and 40 nights of some massive amounts of water and bursting forth with thousands of deep breaking up, cutting things like that. It, it's a, water's amazing, by the way. You can cut through and do some amazing stuff. If you don't believe that, talk to these guys that know how to use the uh, deal where you can punch numbers into a little computer and put a sheet of metal there, and it can put all sorts of stuff, uh, that, and they don't use the plasma stuff anymore. They use water to cut through metal. Why? Because water is amazingly powerful, and God used that same water to create things like the Grand Canyon and the Rio Grande Gorge, the Taos Gorge, what they call it up there. Um, the layers of the hill. If you ever driven through New Mexico and seen different layers, it almost looks like that there was water settling and laying that silt down in different layers. It almost looks like it, that's exactly what happened. The evidence of a worldwide flood. Ship Rock, New Mexico is evidence of a worldwide flood. I know how Ship Rock got there. Genesis 7 11, the Bible says, in the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. Most people hear about Noah's flood. Oh, by the way, what kind of lights were on the ark? <laughs> Floodlights. <laughs> hey, well, that's my that, that's that's compliments of, of Brother Di. Pastor Di told me a couple weeks ago he just came. And I like when he wants to tell me because almost always it's a help for something. And, and he said, Hey, what kind of lights are on the flood? I thought, oh no, here we go again. And he said, Oh, floodlights. I'm like, great. I told Alyssa, there are dad jokes. And she loves dad jokes. And there are preacher jokes. And then there's dad preacher jokes. And I love all of them. When we think of the flood in Noah's day, we hear, you know, uh, 40 days and 40 nights worth of rain. But don't forget, the Bible also says the fountains of the great deep were broken up. You know, we get our water from down inside the earth. There's lots of water inside the earth. And the fountains of the deep were broke up. You know how Shiprock got there? There was a rock there, and the fountain of the deep broke up, and when it broke up, it shot that rock up. It didn't take billions and billions of years of the world being that high and eroding down to where now ship rock is up. That just doesn't even make sense. What makes more so, what actually makes sense, evidence of things not seen, is this, Genesis 7, the fountain of the great deep were broke up. And as it shot out, and water can, can, uh, is extremely powerful, and a, a spout of water, a ground, uh, found the great deep breaking up, could move a rock that big up to the surface. It's exactly what happened. The evidence of things not seen. The description of faith. We've got to hurry on before we get done tonight. Number two, back in Hebrews chapter 11, not just a description of faith, but Hebrews 11, 28 Remind, excuse me, reminds me that we're delivered by faith. Hebrews 11 and 28. Chad, to get there. Hebrews 11, 28. The Bible says this. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. That's how the children of Israel brought out the land of Egypt. Do you remember it? Well, as I do, they sprinkled the blood. They put the door, the blood on the doorpost, the blood of the innocent lamb. Every house had that blood, the angel would pass over. Every house that didn't have the blood, the firstborn would die. It was a picture of the day that Jesus Christ shed his blood for us. And we're delivered the same way we're delivered by the blood through faith. This chapter deals with many that were delivered and also uh, delivered others by having faith in God. We that are on the way to heaven have also been delivered by faith. Hebrews 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. There's a disturbing trend in Christianity, even among some, uh, what they call themselves, Bible-believing churches, of believing 
and following a false teaching such as this, Jesus plus something to be saved. That's a damnable heresy. It's not Jesus plus anything. It's through Jesus Christ. A person cannot quit, cannot quit sinning in order to get saved. You don't have to be perfectly holy to achieve salvation. I do wish more Christians were striving to live holy, but being holy doesn't give a person salvation. It's by faith through Jesus Christ. We're delivered by faith. The Bible clearly teaches we're delivered by faith. It also clearly teaches that you're saved one time. It says it this way, eternal life, everlasting life, never perish, or kept by the power of God. You know why? Because we've been delivered by faith. Yep. If I have to keep it, guess what? It's not by faith anymore. If any part of my salvation is up to me, if the earning part is up to me, it's not by faith. If the keeping it part is up to me, it's not by faith. But we've been delivered by faith. The children of Israel didn't have to keep the blood on the doorposts. They applied it. They were spared. Delivered by faith. Look at verses 33 through 39. I see their determination of, of their faith or determination given them by having faith in God. They're, verse 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, Stop the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness remain strong, wax valiant in fight, turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover, bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatkin, goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. In order to accomplish these things that are listed, they had to be determined. Most, I wonder how many today in modern day Christianity would put up with all that stuff. The way they were able to have this type of determination to keep on was by faith. Verse 40 tells that God had provided some better thing. That we by faith hear what they look forward to faith. Uh, they had received the promise, verse 40, God having provided some better thing for us. Uh, verse 39, here's the better thing for us is we're, we're looking back by faith. They're looking forward by faith. They look forward to the cross. We look back to the cross. It's all the same way you get saved by faith. What can keep these Christians so determined to continue for God? By faith. They were, think about this, being sawn asunder. That there's... There's ways I won't mind dying. A quick whatever. Something fast will be fine with me. Or, you know, ripe old age of whatever, laying down, not waking up on this earth again. That'd be fine. I would not want to face being sawn asunder. Or being stoned, slain with a sword, afflicted, destitute. I, that, that kind of stuff doesn't, I'm not praying that I go through that stuff. I don't, wasn't sure if these guys were either, but by faith, they were able to endure, because by faith they looked and said, we can endure this because our faith is so great in God. I see the details of their faith as well, like in verse 32, where the Bible says this. Where he says, and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon. The time would fail me. It's wonderful to read the Word of God. See what these and others did by faith and how they did it. By faith, the children of Israel, in Exodus 14, they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. In Joshua chapter 3, by faith the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River on dry ground. It may not seem like a lot of faith to walk through the Red Sea on dry ground, but you've got to remember 
The sea was flat just a few minutes ago. And then God caused that great wind to come and he split the Red Sea in half. And now the wall the water stood up on a heap side by side. And so now you're walking through there with massive amounts of water on either side. With nothing holding that water back. And by faith you're walking through there. And all it was was their faith in God allowed them to get through. Because all it was was God holding it back. Because as soon as they got through, Pharaoh's army went through. And I believe it was at the exact center point. They couldn't go any far this way or that way. Their chariot wheels just happened to fall off. And then they said, uh-oh, we think God's on their side. And then when the last Israelite got through, Pharaoh's army in the middle, God just closed it back. Kill them all. By faith they passed through. By faith they got the Jordan River and the priests holy the ark. They walked up the river and the river, it took some faith by those priests to step into that water. And as soon as they did, dry ground. The great thing was there as well that the water kept going down and then cleared out, but this water kept piling up on heat. It took faith for all those children of Israel to go through. But I think those priests holding the ark had an extra ounce of faith. Because they're standing there knowing that water's getting higher and higher and higher and higher. By faith. By faith, the children of Israel marched around Jericho 13 times and blew trumpets. That makes no sense whatsoever. Jo uh, Joshua, here's how you're going to defeat Jericho. You're going to march around. Then you're going to march around. And then, the last thing you're going to march around was six times, seven times, like the math and all there, you know, my God, it's horrible. But a total of 13 times, they marched around, then blew the trumpet, and the walls fell down flat. And by the way, the walls didn't fall down flat because they marched around 13 times, and their footsteps caused the ground to do whatever, and that made the walls go down. No, God told them to march around as many times as they did, and as soon as they obeyed the word of God, God just pushed those walls down. Well, he didn't even push them down. He just told them to fall down. They fell down flat by faith. By faith, Gideon and his 300 men conquered the Midianites by holding a lamp inside a pitcher and blowing a trumpet and shouting the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. 2 Kings 6, 7. By faith, Elisha was able to see an axe head float. In honor of Father's Day, I've lost so many of my dad's tools. I wish that I could do the same thing and make some of those things come back once again. Especially when I was a teenage boy. I wondered, how in the world am I going to explain this? Or just hoping he never realized those tools were gone. Because that's what happened to Elijah. They were out there chopping wood. The head fell off in the water. And it wasn't Elijah doing it. one of the other young men, one of the sons of the prophets. Alas, Master, what shall we do? And I know they're Baptists because it says, because it was borrowed. For it was borrowed. Elijah said, don't worry about it. Go get it. It's going to float up on top of the water. No, it's not. Boom, there it is floating on the water. Preacher, you really believe that happened? I absolutely believe that happened. By faith. The details of their faith. Hebrews 11, 16 talks about our destination by faith. We'll close here. The destination by faith. Hebrews 11, 16. But now... They desire a better country, that is, in heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for hath prepared for them a city. We have an amazing destination waiting for us that by faith we can look forward to. In Titus, it's worded this way, looking for that blessed hope. 1 Peter 1, 3-4, I'm going to read that. I said we'll close here. I meant we'll start closing here. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 4. We are in verse 3, well, before we begin, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. 1 Corinthians 2.9, the Bible says, But as, as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared 
for them that love him. Over and over again, the Hebrews 11, the Bible said, by faith, by faith, by faith. An amazing way to live, and the best way to live the Christian life is by faith. I'm going to challenge you tonight, Luke 17. This will be the last scripture we look at, Luke, tonight. Luke 17. What would be like the apostles in Luke 17? I remember the apostles in Luke 11, I think it was, Matthew chapter number 6, where they came to Jesus and said, This Lord, teach us to pray. Now, what a great thing to ask of God. We ought to be like the apostles again here in Luke 17. And then, verse 5, then take heed to what Jesus told them in verse number 6. Luke 17, 5, the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say to this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. You really believe that would happen? I really believe that could happen. I just believe we don't have enough faith for it to happen. I really believe our church is ready to step out by faith and do some great things. But here's the thing. Here's where we have uh, I've not led us right in the past. Is we keep talking about faith by faith by faith. And we forget that verse that says that faith without works is dead being alone. For the next few weeks, probably lay some groundwork to scare you to death on what we want to do by faith in our church. It's easy to stay and maintain 75. That's what we've been doing, staying and seeing a few people saved here and there. But I think God wants us to go above and beyond. God wants our faith to increase. God wants us to be like the apostles and say, Lord, increase our faith. And he said, man, he kind of got onto them. If he had faith, it's a grain of mustard seed. Pretty tiny. You've, you've seen the illustration. You've seen all about how small a mustard seed is. If we have that much faith, we can say to the sycamine tree, get plucked up, go into the seed, it'll happen. But a lot of times we ask in faith, the Bible says, but ask in faith, nothing wavering. It's like God's been leading me in, in, in opening some different things and just things happening. And I think he's telling us to get ready to take a big step of faith. God can do great things in our church. How's it going to happen? By faith. Gideon never thought that he'd be the guy to deliver the, the, them out of the hand of the Midianites. When the, in Judges 6, when that angel of the Lord appeared into Gideon, Gideon was threshing wine, a threshing wine, threshing wheat in the wine press. And the angel said, The Lord is with thou, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon's like, Who, me? You can't use me. And I, I'm pretty sure that if Gideon had his choice, he would have used the 32,000 men that showed up. He wouldn't have got rid of all but 300. But God said, By faith, you got to do it by faith, Gideon. And I'm thankful that Gideon, once he put that fleece out there two times, he then stepped out by faith and said, God, whatever it is you want me to do, I'll be willing to do it. He had that same desire the apostles did. Lord, increase our faith. I'm glad that we want to live by faith, but let's get ready to increase our faith. Because Jesus said, if you've got just a little bit of faith, you can do great and mighty things for God. That's what I want our church to do is great things. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for faith. Thank you for the saving faith. God, that I'm hoping everybody in this church tonight has that, that they've been born again, that by faith they've reached out and asked you to be their Savior. If there's any among us tonight that have not done that, pray tonight it will be that night that they do. Lord, for those that are have been born again, that are trusting you to get them to heaven, Lord, we've placed our faith in you to take our soul to heaven. To help us, dear God, as we live on this earth, that we would be like the disciples in desire that you would increase our faith. As you do that, God, it will take some stepping out by faith for us to take that first step and do great things for you. Help us spend time in prayer and fasting about what you'd have us to do. To speak to our hearts, help us to draw an eye to you. Lord, increase our faith, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together, please. We head back, we're going to close. The music plays tonight. Maybe you want to come and just ask God to increase your faith. Maybe your faith needs to grow. Well, that's kind of a silly statement. Yes, our faith does need to grow. It'll never grow until we ask God to grow it. Too many Christians are content with the faith that they have. 
Let's let God grow our faith. By the way, as our faith grows, it will take uncomfortable things happening for our faith to grow. We'll have to step out by faith out of our comfort zone. When Peter stepped out of the boat to walk on the water to see Jesus, that was an uncomfortable thing for him to do. But he stepped out by faith and he walked on the water. When Gideon broke that pitcher and told all of his men, break the pitcher and shout, the sword of the Lord of Gideon, it took faith for that to happen. But, by, but he stepped out by faith and God did a great thing that day. By faith, David grabbed that rock and chunked it and hit Goliath in the head. By faith, we can do great things for God. But it's going to be uncomfortable now and then. But that's okay because we've got the God that He leads us by faith. He'll be there to help us in our faith. We don't know yet because they have a post up time they start. They're an hour behind us. What's that? Usually at 6 30, correct? 6 6 30? Okay, so if you want to plan on being here at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, that way if we're a little early because if the teens are here for an entire hour before it gets started, somebody's going to lose their hair. And so we don't want all that to happen. So plan on having them here at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And then um, you know, if you need to drop them off, that's fine. Just make sure that somebody's here when you drop them off. And all that. So, I'll, if we know an exact time, I'll text everybody tomorrow. But let's just plan on instead of 6 30, 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Then we'll know for sure on Tuesday night what time it'll start because whenever it starts Monday, then we'll start Tuesday. So, number 19 in your hymn books. So, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, if you would please. I know that's not too late because uh, young people could stay up late. Uh, that would be just fine. So, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, number 19, Sinner, St. Vinegrace. What I once was, if you can go with me back to where I started from, then I know you would see the miracle of love that took me in sweet embrace and made
dismissed. God bless you tonight. God bless you.